What's up everybody out there in YouTube land, Nintendrilla here once again, and I'm going to start a new little mini-series. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many episodes we are going to have in this little mini-series, but I just basically wanted to talk about a console every time and give you guys an idea why I actually collect for this console. Uh, this week, obviously, I'm going to be talking about the TurboGrafx-16, but there are quite a few consoles that I collect for that people kind of scratch their heads at, like it's obsolete gone system like the Sega CD or Sega Master System. Uh, basically the short answer is there are great games for almost every console that is available. Now there are exceptions. Uh, the Atari Jaguar is basically useless besides a few games that were either done really well on that system but still reported to others or they had a couple games like I know there's a Tempest game on Atari Jaguar that's supposed to be like one of the better games on it but really the Atari Jaguar is pretty useless for the most part. However, there are a lot of really, really good systems, such as the TurboGrafx-16, that just have amazing games for them, and I can't stress enough that I would rather have a lot of consoles with a few good games for every console, rather than having a full set of something and having a bunch of crappy games in there. At one point I talked about possibly going for a full Super Nintendo set, and I decided against that because, quite frankly, I don't want crappy games in my collection. Now there are probably exceptions in my collection for sure. I have a copy of Hydlide for NES, if that tells you anything. But that's kind of childhood nostalgia. I don't want sports games, I don't want crappy racers, you know, I don't want a lot of fighting games that just suck. So I don't go for those and I don't want to collect them. I'd rather focus my time on another console instead. If I run out of things to collect on my favorite co system, the Super Nintendo, which isn't going to happen anytime soon, I can move on to another system because there's plenty of good games for plenty of good systems, and the TurboGrafx is a great example. Now, the TurboGrafx-16 came out originally in Japan in 1987 under the moniker of the PC Engine, and was a much smaller unit, was gray, and looked kind of like a cross between this and an NES, and uh, had a lot of cool games. Two full years later, the TurboGrafx came out in 1989 in the United States, uh, leaving me to wonder what awesome games came out in between those years that we didn't get uh, or did we get later ports. I don't actually know the answers to these questions, but if you do, please leave a comment below. Anyways, my point is, 1989 Turbo Graphics comes on the scene, and it's an unusual system. It's called the Turbo Graphics 16 because most people assume it's a 16-bit graphics system. That is not true. It is actually an 8-bit graphics system, however, it has a 16-bit processor in it which allows it to do a lot more than a normal 8-bit system. It almost rides in between an 8-bit and a 16-bit system, though some games arguably very much look like Super Nintendo games or Sega Genesis games. They are pretty refined, and it's pretty amazing what having a 16-bit processor actually does for a system. There's not much flicker and slowdown in even some of the faster games, uh, to, to my knowledge. Uh, maybe I'm playing all the right games, or maybe I'm just not as sensitive to it as other people, but um, there are some games that I've played on the system where I expected a lot of slowdown because there was a lot of crap going on, and I really didn't experience much or any at all. So there's that that's going for it. Uh, also, the Turbo Graphics is generally just a pretty cool looking system. Uh, it did not come with this original back. This is the Turbo Booster. The Turbo Booster allows you to plug in AV cables, therefore giving you stereo sound and better video as opposed to just a coaxial. Uh, this whole back part comes off and there's an original one that goes on here and uh, your AC adapter goes in there. And yeah, the Turbo Booster is actually harder to get than the actual system. I got lucky that I got mine with the system. Uh, but even just a normal Turbo Graphics is very nice and uh, has quite a library of really good games, and I'm going to talk about some of those today. Um, but also, in addition, there was a CD unit available for this that played CD unit games, and they were exclusive to that system. In other words, you couldn't play the CD games anyway on this. You had to have the CD unit or a Turbo Duo. The Turbo Duo came out later on and actually featured the uh, cue card slot and the uh, CD unit itself built into one, uh, kind of like the CDX for Sega. So uh, I only have one CD game, I'm going to show you guys that real quick. Uh, this is Cosmic Fantasy 2, pretty cool, it's a working designs game and it's an RPG. Now the thing about the CD unit is, <laughs> just like the Sega CD, it's not so much an upgrade on graphics, it's more of a sound upgrade. Uh, sure maybe the graphics might be a little bit better, but 
honestly, most games you're not really going to notice the difference between the TurboGrafx-16 and the Turbo CD. Uh, Cosmic Fantasy 2 is a good example. The graphics are very much like an old school RPG that's uh, maybe even less quality of graphics than Super Nintendo. Uh, bordering on like good Nintendo graphics, but uh, very good music, CD quality music, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I don't have a CD unit, they're kind of expensive to get, the Turbo Duo is kind of expensive to get, I will eventually get one, hopefully. Uh, one thing to note about the Turbo Graphics is the controller comes with Auto Turbo, which is pretty neat, and it's set up very much like the NES controller, so it's very comfortable in your hands. Uh, it's actually more comfortable in my hands because it's got rounded corners. Uh, however, of note is the approximately three foot long, or should I say three foot short, cord that comes with it, which is just ridiculous. What does help is if you get the uh, turbo adapter, the, the, I can't remember what it's called, I'll put it down in the description below, but there's an adapter that makes it so you can have five players play at once, because Turbo Graphics only supports one player at a time. Freaking crazy, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, also of note, there's no light when you turn this on. Just a little orange thing that shows up when you turn the system on. But uh, yeah, those are some of the quirks about the system. But overall, a very good system. They came packaged in games... In, uh, the, the games came packaged in uh, boxes like this. This is my only true complete in-box Turbo Graphics game. It actually still has the wrapper on it. But yeah, this is Battle Royale, a uh, wrestling game. And uh, when you open it up... You get a CD case, or what looks like a standard CD case, with a sticker on it and a blank back. And then inside, it's got this little thing that holds the hue card, and the hue card's got a little protective sleeve. So uh, that's pretty much what a Turbo Graphics game looks like if some of you guys are not familiar with them. Um, but yeah, Turbo Graphics are pretty neat for several reasons, and one of them is the Hue cards, those are really cool to collect for. I don't even mind when I get games that are not complete in box because the hue cards look so darn cool. But uh, yeah, Battle Royale, um, not necessarily one of the games I'm recommending, just wanted to show you guys the box, what they looked like. Uh, games that I am recommending, there are quite a few adventure games. One reason to own a Turbo Graphics, if you like side scrolling adventure games, well, you're in for a treat. There are some really good ones. Uh, a few I do not have. Uh, Splatterhouse, a really good one, a horror game where you go room to room fighting all kinds of evil baddies and uh, what's cool is your, brand, your paths can kind of branch off and go into different ways even though they kind of end up at the same spot you can go different routes to get to the same bosses at the end of each level which is pretty interesting. Um, the games that most people know on the system are the Bonks game like uh, Bonks Adventure and Bonks Revenge uh, where you play a big-headed dude that knocks people and things out with a skull and can chew his way up walls and shit. It's pretty awesome. I do not have any of those yet, but they are a must-have. Um, I know people that have played them and I've seen reviews. They are definitely a must-have. I am working on getting those. Uh, there are actually a couple of pinball games that are quite well-known and quite liked. Those would be Alien Crush and Devil's Crush which are very cool, kind of darker pinball games that you wouldn't really see on like other systems. And uh, it seems like the TurboGrafx didn't really have the limitations that Nintendo put on their systems as far as like blood and religious themes and stuff like that. So you get some kind of darker games and that's kind of neat. But uh, there's other games such as the Legendary Axe series. There are two of these on the TurboGrafx. I just have the first one. The second one's a little harder to get, but uh, Legendary Axe is a side-scrolling adventure game where you can upgrade your weapons, get more life, and become more powerful. It's really actually a very fun game, kind of in the vein of like Ease 3. I'm starting to really like games like that, or like Battle of Olympus. Um, another really, really good side-scrolling game, uh, I'd call this more of a side-scrolling action game, not necessarily adventure, but uh, Ninja Spirit. This is by far one of the best games on the system. Ah, man, this is such a good game. First of all, the graphics are so, so nice. This is one of those games where it makes you think, man, this has to be a 16-bit system. But no, it, it's, it's not. And uh, what's really cool is you get these upgrades where you make doubles of yourself. And you can have like three of them on three of yourself on screen, and you're all using the identical weapon at the same time. And there's this really cool like hook weapon you can switch to that goes across the screen. It's so cool to see three of yourself doing the exact same actions in different parts of the screen and just whooping ass. It's really a fun and satisfying game to play. Uh, I can't recommend Ninja Spirit enough. Really, really fun. 
Um, of the adventure games that I have complete in box, I only have one, and it's the most common one. However, a lot of people knock Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. This is quite a fun game, actually. It's a cool little side-scrolling adventure game that, uh... <laughs> It's, it's kind of quirky because it's got like two different sides to it. You first are a little dude that walks around with a sword and uh, it's kind of slow and you're just slashing at things and uh, then all of a sudden you go in this door and you turn into this robot and you're moving way faster and you're kicking ass and it's really fun all of a sudden and then you go back to being the dude with the sword, a little slower paced, but it's kind of neat how it's got the two things going on and when you're a robot it's actually really fun. It kind of reminds me of Blaster Master a little bit. I don't know why, but yeah, fun game, easiest one to get, cheapest one to get probably. Uh, if for some reason you get a Turbo Graphics and this isn't included, which is weird, uh, definitely go get a copy. It's a it's a good game for five bucks, you know what I mean. But I did want to mention uh, two more games that are really interesting on this system. Uh, one of them is World Court Tennis. And why would I mention a tennis game? Well, apparently there is an RPG included in this where you can go around in random encounters and play matches of tennis with other players and uh, can increase your stats and such. Now, I haven't played this game, but I've heard quite a bit about it and have been looking it up. And this is one of my goals. I really need to get this game. And much like that, there is a racing game with RPG elements in it as well. Or rather, there's an RPG game within this uh, racing game, and that is Final Lap Twin on the Turbo Graphics, and uh, apparently there is a, another full RPG where you race each other in random encounters instead. Now I have not played this, I have not even looked up gameplay footage of it, but it's something to keep your eye out for, and uh, something that I just wanted to, you know, throw your way to, to entice you into the system a little more. Who's heard of sports games with, you know, RPG elements in it? And, you know, the closest thing I could think of is fighting games with RPG elements in it, like, uh, uh, to River City Ransom on NES, you know what I mean? But yeah, really interesting there. Um, another couple games I wanted to mention are Newtopia and Newtopia 2, both of which are adventure games that are basically Legend of Zelda ripoffs, and I do mean the first Legend of Zelda, but seem very good from what I've seen, and I'm quite after those games. For the Turbo Graphics, if you're going for one, go for one if you love shooters. If you love shmups and shoot 'em ups, however you want to call it, this is the system to go for. Now they have old school ones, such as Galaga 90. This came with mine, actually. This was the only game that was included with my TurboGrafx-16. Oddly enough, didn't have uh, Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. Uh, Gal Galaga is a quite well-known game where you are a ship that can only move left and right, and so you don't have the forced scrolling or anything like that, and the enemies kind of come to you. And uh, if you haven't played any of the Galaga games, they're really fun. This is just an upgraded version and just a really nice looking version with really good graphics and uh, very, very fun. Uh, Side-scrolling shooters, there's quite a few of them and a lot of them are really good. I'm really into this one, Deep Blue. Uh, this one takes place underwater, which is just awesome in my opinion. And uh, is really fun, nice graphics, nice sound too. And just one that I don't hear anybody talk about. If I can, I'll try to do a review of this one at some point. But Deep Blue, pretty fun game. And most of you guys know about the R-Type series. From what I can tell, the closest one to this version is the one on Sega Master System. Uh, I'm not positive. I really have not played them back to back, and it's been a while since I played the Sega Master System one, and it's actually been a little while since I played this one too, so I'm going to have to go back and check, but I think these might be the same games, just with slight differences. Uh, R-Type, very, very fun. Side-scrolling shooter, very difficult though. Uh, I do like the weapons upgrade system, but yeah, it's a very difficult game. At least for me, I kind of suck at side-scrolling shooters. I'm much better at overhead ones. Uh, but the one that I actually like the most, and I'm not sure anybody's going to agree with me on this, I really like Aero Blasters as a side-scrolling shooter. I really just like the way it looks. Very bright and vivid colors, and you know, almost looks like a Super Nintendo game. This kind of reminds me of, for some reason, UN Squadron. Um, but yeah, Aero Blasters, really fun, awesome, awesome game. Uh, shooters are the way to go, man. If you want a system that has a lot of good shooters, I don't even have... <laughs> you know, most of them. There's so many more that I don't have. Um, my favorite game so far from the Turbo Graphics I'm going to talk about next, and it is uh, my only vertical uh, shooter, my only overhead shooter, and that is Blazing Lasers. When I first got my Turbo Graphics 16, my buddy Jake let me borrow this game so I could have something else to play other than just Ninja Spirit and I think one other game that I had. 
Um, Blazing Lasers is an amazing game, and it quite reminds me of my favorite Super Nintendo shooter of all time, which is Space Megaforce. Uh, both are fairly new favorites, but man, are they strong favorites. I cannot get enough of Space Megaforce on Super Nintendo and what we're talking about right now, Blazing Lasers. How does this game exist? How can you have so much on screen, so many enemies, so many bullets, and then your freaking weapons are just spraying across the entire screen and there's no slowdown? It's, it's pretty impressive. I think that has to do more with the 16-bit processor. I'm wondering if this system had a 16-bit if the game was a 16-bit system and was had a 16-bit processor, how powerful this would be. The Blazing Lasers was pretty impressive and remains to this day my favorite game for the system. Now, there is one other game that I'm really after that is a shooter, and some people say it's the spiritual successor to Blazing Lasers. That is Super Star Soldier, which is technically a um, sequel to Star Soldier for NES, which was really an arcade hit in Japan. And... Um, yeah, Superstar Soldier looks very much like Blazing Lasers. I'm not sure if it looks quite as good, but uh, it looks amazing. And yeah, something I'm going to keep my eye out for. And if you get a Turbo Graphics, something you should keep an eye out for. So there you go. There's a bunch of games that I have. And I even talked about games I don't have for once uh, that you should get for the Turbo Graphics. Oh, I have one more to mention to you guys. This one's kind of expensive, but uh, Kadash. Uh, which had a port on the Sega Genesis was not nearly as good as the Turbo Graphics port, and Kadash is a little bit more expensive to get, a little bit harder to find, but it looks really awesome. Another side-scrolling adventure, but RPG, um, very much like Ease 3, with more RPG elements than, say, uh, the other one I was talking about, Legendary Axe, which also had a sequel as well, although I hear that that wasn't meant to be a Legendary Axe game, it only became a Legendary Axe game when this one uh, was made like Game of the Year or something in a magazine or something like that. Somebody just told me about that recently. It might have been Chris from PMR Productions. He just did a video on his Turbo Graphics collection. And um, yeah, it's pretty good actually. Check that out. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. He talks about all kinds of cool games too. So if you want more suggestions, check out the link in the description below for PMR Productions. Uh, like I said, Chris has a really good list of good games. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys. There's my Turbo Graphics collection and a little bit about the Turbo Graphics. What do you guys think about this? Uh, by the way, that thing that plugs in for five people, it's called the Turbo Tab. I just remembered. Very useful because it actually adds a little bit of cord also to this very short three foot cable. That's one of the few drawbacks to the system. It's just ridiculous how short this is. I'll even show you. I mean, this is this is ridiculous. It's yeah. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this new series. I'm going to do it on a few more uh, consoles where I just talk about a console and why I actually collect from them. What are the games to own for them? Uh, which ones am I after and which ones do I have that are necessary if you are going to collect for them? So uh, keep an eye out for it. I think the next one is probably going to be the Sega Master System. So yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked it, go ahead and thumbs up the video and share it with a friend. Share it all over if you want. That would be amazing. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. It is red and it says subscribe. It's right down there in the corner. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this series and uh, what systems do you collect for and why? What is your favorite system to collect for? Or what is your favorite oddball system to collect for? And why do you collect for it? And what games are, are you like so into that you had to have the system? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Keep rocking the retro games. See, even this little kitty likes TurboGrafx-16. That's what an awesome system it is. Haha. <laughs>